Chapter 1. Happiness gives your brain a competitive edge and sets you up for success. One common misconception in our society today is that we see happiness as the end result of being successful. The prevailing creed at companies and schools at any level is that if you become as hardworking and productive as you can, you will eventually become more successful and therefore happier. However, thanks to strides in positive psychology, this myth has been turned on its head. Several studies have proven that happiness precedes important outcomes and indicators of success. Before we take a closer look at how happiness leads to success, let's define happiness and understand exactly what it's all about. According to Sean Acor, happiness is the joy we feel striving after our potential. Happiness is essentially the experience of positive emotions, pleasure combined with deeper feelings of meaning and purpose. To be happy, you need to have a positive mood in the present and have a positive outlook for the future. The pioneer of positive psychology, Martin Seligman, broke down happiness into three measurable components, pleasure, engagement, and meaning. Through his studies, he confirmed that people who pursue all three routes lead the fullest lives. However, those who pursue only pleasure experience only a tiny fraction of the benefits of happiness. So instead of moping around waiting for a big break or a huge success that will change your situation and make you happy, start by being happy regardless of your current situation and success will automatically follow. In the following chapters of this summary, you will gain a deeper understanding of happiness and discover how you can set yourself up for success by having a positive outlook on life, no matter the situation in which you find yourself. Happiness functions as the cause, not just the result, of good health. Sean Acor. Chapter 2. How to Improve Your Mood and Increase Your Happiness Baseline When you stay positive and happy, you are giving yourself a great edge at achieving success at whatever you do in life. So to enjoy the happy and fulfilled life you crave, you will have to train your brain to always dwell on positive emotions rather than neutral or negative ones. Happiness triggers the release of neurochemicals, which help you think more clearly and creatively and become better at solving problems. Positive emotions flood our brains with neurochemicals like dopamine and serotonin that not only make us feel good, but also increase the capacity of the learning centers of our brains. And through a series of biochemical reactions, they boost our productivity and problem-solving skills. Obviously, we are all different in our temperaments, and there are people for whom positivity comes more naturally. Fortunately, you can change your happiness baseline regardless of whether you're a naturally happier or moody person. While each of us has a happiness baseline that changes daily, with conscious effort, we can increase that baseline permanently. According to Sean Acar, there are some actions that can boost both short-term emotions and permanently increase your happiness levels. This is how to improve your mood and raise your happiness throughout the day. Meditating, looking forward to something, being kind, exercising, infusing positivity into your surroundings, spending money. As you integrate these happiness activities into your daily life, you will not only start to feel better, but you'll begin to notice how your enhanced positivity makes you more efficient, motivated, productive, and also sets you up for greater achievement. Did you know? A study by psychologist Richard Davidson showed that meditation helps grow the left prefrontal cortex, the part of our brain most responsible for feeling happy. 
So take just five minutes each day to watch your breath go in and out. This will help you reduce stress, improve happiness, and even your immunity over time. Chapter 3. Changing Your Mindset Use Your Fulcrum and Lever to Get Your Desired Outcome The great Greek scientist and mathematician Archimedes famously asserted that a man could single-handedly move the world with a long enough lever and the right fulcrum. In life, our power to maximize our potential is based on two essential things, the length of our lever how much potential power and possibility we believe we have, the position of our fulcrum, the mindset with which we create the power to change. When you shift your fulcrum in a positive direction, the power of your lever will be magnified. So it doesn't matter if you're a student trying to get better grades or a junior executive trying to get better pay, you don't need to try so hard to produce results and generate power. All you have to do is move your fulcrum, your mindset, to a positive direction and the power of your lever will be magnified, ready to move everything up. The more we move our fulcrum, the more our lever lengthens and so the more power we generate. Put simply, by changing your mindset and extending your belief of what's possible, you can enhance your ability to create what initially seemed impossible. It is your fulcrum and lever that determines what you can accomplish in life, not the circumstances around you, not even the weight of the world. Happiness is all about aligning our mindset to always see the ways to rise above our circumstances. Essentially, happiness is not about lying to ourselves or neglecting the negative, but about adjusting our brain so that we always see the ways to rise above our circumstances. By changing the way we perceive ourselves and our work, we can dramatically improve our results. The mere acceptance that we can bring about positive change in our lives is a source of motivation and enhanced job performance. Success, in essence, is a self-fulfilling prophecy. Hence, when faced with a difficult task or challenge, give yourself an instant competitive advantage by concentrating on all the reasons you will succeed, rather than fail. Chapter 4. The Tetris Effect. Program your brain to capitalize on opportunities. The Tetris Effect is a cognitive phenomenon that occurs when we focus so much attention and time on something to the point that it radically changes our thoughts, mental images, and behaviors. This effect was named after the tendency for people to start seeing the world in sequences of Tetris blocks after playing the game of Tetris for a long time. Optimism empowers you to make the best of every situation. Naturally, the human brain is wired in such a way that we often find it difficult to see what is right in front of us if we're not focusing directly on it. In the same vein, when we are looking for something, we see it everywhere. For instance, you hear a song once and suddenly it seems it's always on the radio. You buy a new style of jacket and soon everyone you see on the street is wearing the exact same style. This is why focusing on the wrong things in life will cause you to miss out on great opportunities that present themselves. If you choose to dwell on the negative and find fault in everything, you'll find it very difficult to see positivity in anything around you, no matter how excellent it is. This is known as the negative Tetris effect. The negative Tetris effect is a cognitive pattern that lowers our overall success rate. 
The positive Tetris effect, on the other hand, is a way of seeing that constantly picks up on the positives in all situations. Having a positive outlook on things trains our brains to scan the world for the opportunities and ideas that boost our success rate. Chapter 5. Happiness, Gratitude, and Optimism are the three most important tools available to us. When we choose to focus on the positive, we benefit from three of the most important tools we have as humans, happiness, gratitude, and optimism. So the more you pick up on the positive around you, the better you'll feel. And as we've established earlier, your happiness has a great influence on your performance at work. The second mechanism of the positive Tetris effect is gratitude, because the more opportunities for positivity we see, the more grateful we become. It's also been proven that people who are consistently grateful are more emotionally intelligent, forgiving, energetic, and less likely to be anxious, depressed, or lonely. Positivity yields an endless trend of optimism. Optimism is the third driver of the positive Tetris effect. As your brain continues to pick up on the positive, you'll naturally expect this trend to continue, thereby making you more optimistic. And as it turns out, optimism is a tremendously powerful predictor of work performance. Take three to five minutes each day to make a list of the good things in your job, your career, and your life. The best way to adopt the positive Tetris effect is by making a daily list of the great things in your life, your job, and your career. When you write down a list of the great things that happened that day, you're forcing your brain to scan the whole day for potential positives. This will give you a vivid recollection of the things that brought you small or big laughs, feelings of fulfillment at work, a reinforced connection with family, a glimmer of hope for the future. Focusing on the great things in your life helps your brain get better at noticing and focusing on possibilities for growth and seizing opportunities to act on them. And by training your brain to adopt a positive Tetris effect, you won't just be improving your chance at happiness, you'll be setting off a chain of events that will help you reap all the perks of a positive brain. Chapter 6. Falling Upward. Capitalizing on setbacks and adversities to become happier and more successful. One thing that is very common to each of us as a member of the human species is that we all experience adversity of one kind or another at some point in our lives. This could be mistakes, obstacles, failure, or frustration. We have many words to express the levels of hardship that can befall us at any given time in our personal or professional lives. However, one thing the majority of us often fail to notice is that each setback we experience in life comes with some opportunity for growth that we can teach ourselves to see and take advantage of. Essentially, we have three mental paths during crisis or adversity. The first path is the one that keeps circling around our current situation. The second is the one that leads us to start thinking about the worst case scenarios. The third path is the one that leads us from defeat or setback to a place where we are often stronger than before the fall. Unfortunately, finding the third path in difficult times isn't easy. In a crisis, we often get so stuck in the misery of the status quo that we forget a positive and productive path is available. The difference between those who rise above failure and those who are crippled by it is our ability to find the third path. 
Rather than see failure as a stumbling block, see it as a stepping stone to greatness. Failures and adversities always come with great opportunities in disguise, and the way we choose to see a setback is what ultimately determines whether or not we are going to come out of it stronger than before. So the next time you're feeling hopeless or helpless about some setback in your career, some difficulty at your job, or some distress in your personal life, remember that a third path upwards is available. All you have to do is find it. And most importantly, remember that success is not about never falling down or even simply about falling and rising over and over. Success is not just about simple resilience. It's about propelling ourselves upward with that downward momentum. Success is about capitalizing on setbacks and adversities to become happier, more motivated, and even more successful. It's not falling down, it's falling up. Sean Acar. Chapter 7. Use the Zorro Circle to regain control of situations and take charge of your own fate. In today's world of intense and fierce competition, one of the most prominent drivers of success is the belief that our behavior matters, that we are in charge and have control over our future. Having the innate feeling that we are in control, that we are in charge of our own fate, whether we are at work or at home, is one of the most powerful drivers of both well-being and performance. Unfortunately, given how essential it is to our success and well-being, we don't always feel in control. Whenever our workload and stresses seem to pile up faster than we can keep up, feelings of control are often the first things to desert us, particularly when we try to take on too much at once. The only way we can regain control is through the Zorro Circle, our circle of control. Self-awareness is the first goal we need to conquer, the first circle we need to draw. Cultivate self-awareness by sorting out your feelings. To become self-aware, we need to identify our feelings during distress and put those feelings into words. Regaining control starts with verbalizing the stress and helplessness you're feeling. You can do it by writing down your feelings in a journal or talking to a trusted coworker or confidant. Your next goal after mastering the self-awareness circle should be to pinpoint which aspects of the situation you can control and which you can't. Accepting that some things are just beyond your control helps you focus your energy on the ones you can control. In effect, you'll be able to recognize the stresses that you have to let go of because they're out of your hands, while at the same time, identifying the aspects where your efforts will be more impactful so that you can then focus your energy accordingly. Taking on one small challenge at a time, a narrow circle that slowly expands outward, essentially helps you relearn that your actions do have a direct effect on your outcomes that you are largely the master of your own fate. The more your locus of control becomes internal and the greater your confidence in your abilities become, the more you'll be able to expand your external efforts. Conclusion. Contrary to popular belief, happiness isn't the end result of being successful. Happiness is an essential factor that results in success and account. That is, the happier you are, the more successful you become. Being uptight and moping around all day will get you nowhere. If you want to get ahead, you have to adopt a great outlook on life and capitalize on positivity as often as you can. Happiness fuels productivity. 
The happier you are, the healthier you get physically and emotionally, and the more productive you become, which increases your chances to succeed. So don't wait around to catch a big break or to achieve a major goal before you become happy. Start being happy now. Approach each day with optimum positivity, no matter what your current circumstances say, and success will follow automatically. You can start living a happier life by surrounding yourself with positivity. Put the pictures of your loved ones all around your workplace. Make time to go for a walk on a nice day and stay away from negative people and events. This will help you keep a positive mindset and improve your well-being. Also, try as much as possible to be nice to others and exercise regularly. Altruistic acts reduce stress and improve mental health, and physical activities trigger the release of neurochemicals like endorphins and boost motivation. Lastly, be grateful. Appreciate the things and the people you have in your life. Gratitude is a strong driver for optimism and positive outcomes. Appreciating what you have also helps you relish good life experiences and build strong, meaningful relationships. Try this. Increase your happiness level with meditation. Simply take five minutes out of each day to watch your breath go in and out. Here is how you can go about it. Find a serene place. Sit or lie comfortably and close your eyes. Breathe in and out steadily. Do not try to control your breath. Focus on your breath and notice how your body, your chest, rib cages, and belly move with each breath. Whenever you notice that your mind has started wandering, bring your focus back to your breath.